Factory stands for Zero Fossil Energy Developments. And what that means is we design lifestyles and we design work styles. So we're interested in how the problems of staying alive in the 21st century shape how we live, how we plan cities, uh, how we plan an urban metabolism, how we design pretty well every ingredient of our existence so that we can live within our fair earth share. And that means each citizen's, global citizen's right to emit a certain amount of pollution to the atmosphere and use a certain amount of natural capital for an equitable and democratic lifestyle. So this is pretty, pretty simple. <laughs> uh, it's pretty hard to do. But what we've been really trying to do is show how we can design a higher quality of life at the same time as getting a step change reduction in ecological footprint and carbon footprint. And we just worked at the same problem for years and years and years, so we're quite old now. Um, and the excitement is, after 25 years doing the same thing, we're getting better and better at it. We get it we're achieving consistency, we're achieving economies of scale, we're, we're starting to get costs down, we've launched the first Zero Bills Home, where the building or the surface of the home generates enough renewable electricity from the fabric, coupled with an extremely low demand or requirement for heat and power to basically have no bills. So your house starts to earn you money it means it can also generate power for your personal transportation requirements. Uh, we have a range of electric vehicles. We're designing very low cost electric vehicles. We have a range of electric bicycles, which are basically powered by solar. We have a very small three wheel electric car, which we're launching in a few months time, which is again powered by solar. We have an interchangeable uh, battery uh, technology, which goes into both of those vehicles, which again is tradable so that instead of going to a petrol station, you can buy a half kilowatt hour battery module, which takes you maybe uh, 10 kilometers in a car and, um, and, and maybe uh, 30 kilometers on a bike. So this is, this is exciting. This starts to show how there are alternatives to a fossil fuel powered economy. Um, and that's, that's all coming because we've started to work with uh, different supply chain, different component suppliers, different manufacturers. We're starting to get very, very large scale uh, industry producing products that we've precisely specified and that makes it easier to deliver our, our overall targets. I think this, the, the future is now to, to really show how much fun it is to change over to this new paradigm, to this new way of living and working. And that's why we're so keen on the bikes. Okay, you know, you can tell someone to get out of their car and go and sit in overcrowded public transport, um, which doesn't really work, particularly if it's London. <laughs> um, and they're just, you know, you're asking them to, to, to sacrifice probably quite a lot. Mind you, their car doesn't travel very fast because the, the, the roads are near gridlock. But that, that's not working. So we say, well, look, actually, what's the lowest carbon transport, urban transportation solution and also the lowest cost? Well, actually, it's the bicycle. And what stops people from bicycling? Being sweaty, uh, getting to work, um, uh, needing a shower. Many, police, many, place, many workspaces can't do this. Um, and it's just a hard work if you've worked a long day. You don't want to cycle five miles or, or, or ten kilometres home. Um, so what we, what we did was we, we, we looked at the other solutions in other countries where there was far less money. And, for example, there are three million new uh, electric bikes made in getting on the streets in China every year. 
It's colossal. And yet there are nearly none in the UK. Um, and then we've found that battery technology has, has improved a lot. Um, if, we, if we only discharge our uh, LiPo 4 batteries by 70%, that, that means battery life is, is tripled. And a half a kilowatt hour battery can be easily charged by a solar panel. Even in overcast uh, UK conditions, quite easily. So you start to find that the high cost of electric cars, electric vehicles, um, the, the, the cost is only high because they have very, very large amounts of um, very large amounts of electrical storage. The battery, 15 to 19 kilowatt hours, as a typical example for an electric car. Well, if you can run a run a machine on half a kilowatt hour, then that technology then becomes affordable to the masses. So we've we, we, we developed a range of electric bikes which automatically dock and charge and can be powered by sunlight and, and that really um, that should make that uh, urban transportation possible at the lowest possible carbon footprint. I think the, the, the problems lie not in whether we can do all these things. The problems lie in, in whether we can develop uh, an architectural language, a set of components, uh, low carbon product design, whether we, can, whether we can produce a plausible and credible um, series of lifestyle components so that people don't do this because somebody's telling them to reduce their carbon footprint or, or save the planet or, or, or appeal to their higher nature, um, I believe the only way forward is to just make it desirable, make it fun, make it um, such a clear choice that really they have to be just incredibly stupid to continue with business as usual. Um, and that's, that's, our, that's our motto. Watchtower. It's like a ruined castle on the top of a, a mountain in the French Pyrenees, above the little village of Montferret, and it's built by the French to uh, as a signal tower and fortress to more, to ward off the Moorish invasion, um, and it's completely blended. It's built out of uh, rock face. It's completely become part of the landscape. So it shows how human uh, artifice has now merged with, with, with the, natural, um, the natural geology and the, and the, and the ecosystems. Um, and it shows, it's, I think it's the most beautiful example of this coexistence, how you can, how you can have um, almost a permanent human presence which is so integrated and so beautifully um, adapted to the natural environment and still works. So you can still go and light a, a beacon on top and, um, and, and see if the Spanish are invading. <laughs>